Did you know that tourism destinations have a life cycle? They have moments of growth, of development, and they have stagnation and rejuvenation. And all of this was theoretically defined by somebody called Butler. started back in the 1970s and the 1980s when tourism entrepreneurs and developers were excited about the growth of the travel and tourism industry but they weren't really thinking about the longevity and the sustainability of their businesses. Education and training was limited and people just didn't have the knowledge and the understanding that they have today. These businessmen and businesswomen they saw dollar signs, they saw money and they jumped in head first without really knowing what they were jumping into. The result was ill thought out plans and unsustainable tourism development. Richard Butler wanted to give people some guidance, give them an idea of what might be coming and how best to manage that pathway through development and towards a successful and sustainable travel and tourism industry. And this resulted in the birth of Butler's Tourism Area Lifecycle Model. So how does Butler's Tourism Area Lifecycle Model actually work? Whilst it might sound complicated, it is actually not, it's pretty simple. Butler created a visual graphical depiction of tourism development. And people like visuals. We love graphs, we love images. It helps us to understand. And Butler identified six stages of tourist area evolution. As you can see, there are no specific numbers on the axes, which means that the model can be easily applied to a number of different situations and contexts. And the intention of this model is that people who work in the travel and tourism industry, a range of different travel and tourism stakeholders, can use this as a form of guidance and to help them to understand how tourism development occurs. So what are the six stages of tourism evolution as identified in Butler's tourism area life cycle? Butler wanted to demonstrate that tourism development, as with anything in life, is not a static process. It's fluid, it changes, things change. And there could be lots of different reasons for this. It could be a change in how much disposable income we have as tourists. It could be a change in taste. Places come in and out of fashion. It could be because of external influences like terrorism or natural disasters or pandemics. And Butler demonstrates that whilst each destination will have its own timeline, some will be faster than others, they typically will follow this route that he identifies within his graph, the tourism area life cycle. The first stage of the tourism area life cycle is exploration. The exploration stage marks the beginning. Tourism is limited. The social and economic benefits are small. Tourist attractions are likely to be focused on nature or culture. This is the primary phase when governments and local people are beginning to think about tourism. How could they capitalize on it? How could they maximize their opportunities? What is the best way forward? And this is the start, the very start of the tourism planning journey. The second stage of Butler's tourism area life cycle is involvement. The involvement stage marks the beginning of tourism development. Guest houses may start to open. Foreign investors may start to show an interest in development. Governments may be under pressure to develop transport infrastructure and community resources such as airports, road layouts and healthcare provision. And the involvement stage within tourism development may start to identify things such as seasonality. And the third stage in Butler's area life cycle model is development. During the development stage, there will be lots of building and planning, new roads, 
New train stations, new airports, all of these things may be built. New tourist attractions may emerge. Hotels and hospitality provisions will be put in place. During the development phase, there will likely be an increase in marketing and promotion of the destination. And there could be an increase in media and social media coverage. During this time, the tourist population may begin to outnumber the local population. Local control becomes less common and top-down processes and international organisations begin to play a key role in the management of tourism. During this time, local control becomes less prominent and there are often more big players like international organizations and management often comes from more of a, a top-down perspective and the fourth stage in Butler's tourism area life cycle model is consolidation. During the consolidation stage, tourism growth slows. This may be intentional to limit tourist numbers or to keep tourism products and services exclusive, or it may be unintentional. There will generally be a close tie between the destination's economy and the tourism industry. In some cases, destinations have come to rely on tourism as their main source of income. Many international chains and conglomerates will likely be represented in the tourism area. This demonstrates globalization, which can have a negative impact on the economy of the destination as a result of economic leakage. It's during this stage that discontent from the local people may start to become evident. In other words, people are not so happy about things. And the fifth stage in Butler's tourism area life cycle model is stagnation. The stagnation stage represents the beginning of a decline in tourism. During this time, visitor numbers may have reached their peak and varying capacities may have already been met. The destination may simply no longer be desirable or fashionable. And it is during this time that we will often see the negative impacts that are associated with over tourism or unsustainable tourism development. These could be economic impacts, environmental impacts, and social impacts. And the final stage of Butler's tourism area life cycle model is decline or rejuvenation. The outcome of this will depend upon the plans and the actions of the stakeholders involved with tourism development. If the destination fixes their problems, they can rejuvenate. It can improve again. But if it doesn't, it's probably going to keep on going downhill and continue to decline. In severe circumstances, the decline of a tourism destination may be rapid. And this could be because perhaps there is an illness there, or a war, or a natural disaster. Whilst some people do argue that Butler's tourism area life cycle model is a bit too simple, it is a great way to demonstrate the pathway that destinations might go along and to allow people to reflect on that and really think about how should I manage this in the best way to make sure travel and tourism is sustainable, to make sure it will always make us money, to make sure it's not going to destroy the beaches that people are going to visit because they won't keep on visiting if they're destroyed, to make sure it's not upsetting the local people because upset people is never going to have a good outcome. So Butler really did us a big favour by producing this model and it's still used to this day. Now, if you have found this video helpful, please do me a favor, give me a big thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe to my channel too because I do teach lots of things, travel and tourism, just like this.